Hello everyone, it's so good to be here again. Today is Sunday, August 29th, and the topic of our lesson is Always Confident, the Big Idea, Hope Eternal. My name is Sister Cynthia Randolph, and I have this awesome, awesome honor to bring this lesson to you on today, and I pray that God will cause the message to just reach you right where you are. So before we head into the lesson, we will say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time in your word. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to bring this lesson to your people, Lord. We pray, God, that you would take the front seat, Lord, and that you would guide every word, every thought, every word said, Lord. God, may the word just pierce us right where we are, Lord. And I pray even that this word will continue to speak to me, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the hope that lies in you. We thank you, Father, that even though we are in this world, we are not of this world. And we just bless you, Father, that you love us this much, God, that you've already made a plan for us. Lord, we thank you, God, for the confidence. We thank you, God, for touching each and every child watching, every teen watching this this lesson, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you have chosen us, Father, that you've already made a way. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for us just reaching out to you and recognizing that you are our source and that our eternal destiny is with you. Lord, we thank you, Father, for reminding us that we belong to you and that this is not our home. Lord, we bless you and we magnify you, God. We pray God for this ministry, Bethel Baptist Church. We pray God for our pastor, our first lady, every family, Lord, attached to this church. We pray God that you would touch us indeed, Lord. Help us, Father, to keep our eyes on you. May we be focused in on what is eternal, not that which God is temporary, but that which is eternal. And Lord, we thank you, Father, that you've already made a way Lord, we give you all the honor. We give you the glory, Lord, and we thank you for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray and do believe. Amen. Amen. Always confident, the big idea, hope eternal. We're going to dive right in to this lesson. It is a great lesson. It just reminds us of where our focus should be, and it reminds us of the hope that we have as Christians. So we're going to dive in. We'll get into the story. And I pray that you've been having a great, great summer as it is about to wrap up. I hope that you enjoy. Well, actually, it has wrapped up. <laughs> and I hope that your first week of school has been good and that you're continuing to wear your mask and stay as safe as you possibly can. And even through all of this, with us having the masks on, which, with COVID going rampant, around us with the challenges in this world. I just hope that you're feeling hopeful. You, there is a recognition that God is in control and that he is covering us right now. So let's dig in. We're going to start with the story. And as we usually do, we'll talk a little bit and then we'll go into the supporting scripture. Here's the story. It's excerpt from Heather's diary. Dear diary, I thought I'd share why I became a Christian. I was three when my parents divorced. Though I was young, it affected me for my entire childhood. I felt something was missing all of my teen years. My mom and I still went to church, but I buried my pain. We didn't talk about it, and I didn't see my dad very often. I stopped going to youth ministry and just sat in the back of the church. My mother figured as long as I was there, that was good enough. I stopped talking and drowned my pain in music. And then the unimaginable happened. I began to have a lot of chest pain. I told my mom and she took me to the doctor. I was diagnosed with ALL, I had leukemia. This event shook my family. My body was clearly in on the joke to get rid of me. What else could go wrong? My mom forced me to a prayer service and a group of ladies 
laid hands on me. The healing was not immediate, but it taught me a lot. It taught me to value my family, and most of all, to value the gift of life. I made it through, not unscarred, but unshaken in my faith. I learned that my body is temporary, but I am not. It's strange. When you are faced with death, you begin to contemplate your own mortality. So my diary, excuse me, so diary, my message to myself is to know that this body is temporary, but that there is an eternal unseen reality that exists and that it waits, awaits me, but not yet. Wow, this is a pretty deep story, but it is reality. It is reality. So let's go through a summary of the story. Let's touch the questions, and then we'll head into the scripture. We have a young girl. Her name is Heather. Her parents have divorced, and this has been a trying time for her. She didn't even realize what was happening to her as a result of the divorce and the way she felt. There's some flags here that I want to call out to you because I know all of us can find ourselves numb as things happen, as we encounter the trials and tribulations of life. And that's what happened with her. She didn't even realize what was occurring. Because remember, she said something was missing. Have you ever felt like, gosh, I don't feel the way I used to? Like that you have a weird feeling, that's what she felt. So keep that in mind, weird feeling, number one. And she said it happened all of her teen years. She said she went to church, but she buried the pain. Burying pain is usually is a sign of depression when you've got this bad feeling. I used to call it, I'm having a blah moment or a blah day. But burying pain, so feeling something's missing and you've buried something that's hurtful, sign number two. The next thing she said was, we didn't talk about it, and she didn't see her dad very often. So now she has to feel something is missing, she's buried her pain, and she's not having any conversation to try to resolve it. Sign number three. Then as a result of that, all of those things, action started to occur. She stopped going to youth ministry. She sat in the back of the church. Now it's changing her behavior, right? And then she said her mom figured as long as she went to church, it was okay because at least she was there. But she stopped talking and she drowned her pain in music. So now something else in the world is taken over the thing that was supposed that would have provided her with relief. Talking to God, talking to other Christians, being a part of something that's bigger than this world, right? And then the then, so all of that, that was those were signals. Those were indicators that something was going wrong, but it never threw up enough of a flag for a change to happen in behavior. So then the unimaginable happened, which was her having chest pain and leukemia. And it was diagnosed as leukemia. And she said that shook her family. And it caused her mom to get back involved and bring her to the church and encourage her engagement in church. And it caused her, although she didn't realize it, to get back in touch with her faith, get back in touch with God, and realize that this life is temporary. This body that we have is temporary. And ultimately, our life eternal is in heaven, is with the Lord. But all of those, very, very, this was a great story because those are the kinds of signals we want you to think about withdrawing from things, not talking, um, 
not um, engaging, then maybe you've gotten away from coming to church, being involved with the youth ministry, the, talking to your parents, all of those things, drowning in a video game, drowning in um, music and just letting those words go into your ears. That's all things of the, you know, things of the world. It didn't say she was listening to gospel music. It didn't say that, you know, it, it didn't say that she was reading her word. It's that she had kind of become numb to those things. And we have to be mindful that that those are Satan's tactics. He gets you off to yourself. He causes you to think on other things. But God drew up the flag and says, I'm, I'm going to shake her. I'm going to get her back on track. Yes, yeah, something happened. And that was the sign of sickness, the leukemia to say, look, life is not promised. So anyway, I thought this was a really, really great story to go along with our scripture. And I want you to look at the check it questions. I'll call them out right now. I believe I've touched on every point, but I'll call them out. And then you can answer them on your own. Why did Heather, number one being, why did Heather lose her faith? Or why did she lose faith? What was the catalyst to her conviction? And what happened to Heather that brought her to her breaking point? And we all know what that is. And then the last thing is what did she learn? What did she learn? And, and you know, many of us, many of you may not have dealt with a terrible illness, something that could potentially take you out. But maybe you've had a relative who has passed away or who has been deathly ill or even a pet that has been deathly ill. All of that fits into the category of a shaking where you get you have a realization that this life, us being here on Earth, this is temporary. We are mortals which means there is um, mortality means that you die. So we all will one day die. This flesh is not meant to live forever. So um, that was the learning. So then it's like, how do I live my best life while I'm here? And, and also consider my future like where I want to be in the future. And I, if you're like me, I want to be with the Lord. So let's go into the scripture, which will guide uh, the rest of our conversation. The scripture is coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through chapter 5, verse 10. And it's the NIV version. And this we know Paul wrote uh, the Corinthians. So we're in the second Corinthians. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly, outwardly, we are wasting away, yet inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. I'm going to just pause for a moment. So on, on the outside of us is our flesh, right? What we see. On the inside is the spirit, the Holy Spirit. Our spirit is inside of us. So that's when it talks about outwardly, we are wasting away from the point that we are born, right? We're growing and growing and growing, but we ultimately, this body, it, it begins, death starts, right? Death is more illnesses, other things, pains, headaches, all kinds of things. <laughs> Viruses attack us, right? And so this body is just not meant to last. So that's the first verse. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Light and momentary troubles. So things happen to us. I mentioned a couple things, things that cause you cause us to be uncomfortable here on this earth. And those troubles cause us to reach to the to God, to reach out to God, to seek him that he will help us in our time of trouble. And there's no one else who is able to help us in the way that the Lord can to, to encourage us and give us hope. 
And so it allows us, enables us to achieve this eternal weight of glory, like ultimately to arrive at being the person that he wants us to be so that we can, we can be with him in the future. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So we can't see our spirit. Our faith is not visible. But what we see, our physical bodies, that is temporary. What, looking at someone else, looking at their features, the, the houses, all the things on this earth, they are temporary. But we're living for the eternal. So verse chapter five, verse one, for we know that if the earthly tent, our bodies, that's what it's being referred to here, the our bodies, this tent that our, our spirits are living in. If, if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Yes. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan in our burden because we do not wish to be unclothed. In other words, we don't really want. Nobody thinks about the death part. We want to reach our eternal home. But that in between part of having to die, that's the hard part. And to suffer some of the things that we have to go to in our, in our, our human nature is not wanting to go through the trials and tribulations, but these are the things that cause us to grow and to be who God wants us to be. Um, I'll go back. So um, for while we are in this tent, we groan in our burden because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life, life in Christ. Now, the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God who has given us the spirit as a deposit. So that spirit is deposited in us. He's already made this promise and it guarantees what is to come. That's right. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are in, at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. As long as we are in this body, we are not in heaven because the, the word says to be absent from the body, this physical shell that we have is to be present with the Lord. So that's just just aligning right with what I just read in verse six. For we live by faith, not by sight. And that is a challenge for all of us today because we are only very familiar with the sight part, right? Like what we look like. So, so we're constantly working on our bodies, constantly trying to take care of the physical things that we have. But we know that through faith, God, we are saved. And we have to focus our attention, not, we want to take care of our temples, but our ultimate goal is to be with the Lord. So we, we must live by faith and not by sight. And verse eight says, we are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. This is Paul talking. He said, so we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. For we live by faith and not by sight. We live by faith and not by sight. So before I go into the scripture discussion, I, this one thing I read as I was studying the lesson, I thought I have to call this out. It's, it's a, it was written by C.S. Lewis, The Problem with Pain, and it aligns so perfectly with the story we read Heather's, from Heather's diary as well as the scripture. And it's really about light suffering. So the, 
different things that we go through, whether it's health issues, whether it's, it's death, whether it's a financial issue, something you need, you can't get at that moment. These challenges we have on this earth, that's light suffering. And C.S. Lewis says, God whispers to us in our pleasures. He's a small, it's just a little whisper while we're enjoying pleasures. He speaks in our conscience, but he shouts in our pain. And it's his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. All of that saying is there comes a point when he's no longer whispering to try to get our attention. Pain is the catalyst, is what's used to cause us to turn back to him, to make sure that we hear him when it says to rouse a deaf world, a world that gets caught up in the things of this earth and not pay attention to. I, get, I love my music. So, uh, somebody might say, I love my video games. Somebody else may say, I love my phone and my social media. And God's saying, yeah, those things are fine, but turn your attention to me. Set your mind on the things eternal. That's what's important. And if I have to use pain, if I have to use some struggle to get you to turn back to me, yes, I will do that. And he also says in the word, it says um, we all will endure trials and tribulations. It, it, you can try all your might to avoid it, but that's just a part of life. So we're going to endure some things that he might grow in us, that he might be able to use us for his kingdom to help somebody else. So this is how we are transformed from just being an earthly being, someone who doesn't know the Lord, to being useful to him. It is the challenges that we go through that cause us to be able to transform and become the person God wants us to be. In today's passage, Paul's admonishment was to not get discouraged or sidetracked by temporary earthly conditions. Right. Because we're going to endure those things, but we have to recognize that they are temporary. Instead, believers should keep focused on their heavenly, eternal destiny. Keep our eyes focused on the Lord. That is my thing. We, we just want to do that. Paul encouraged the Corinthians that whatever they had to endure at present was a momentary inconvenience compared to the eternity we shall spend with Christ in glory. And, and that is the key thing. Like we, I look back over my life. I'm now 57 years old and it seems like it was just yesterday, but I can certainly tell the difference from when I was younger to where I am now. And I know that I'm headed on, I'm on the other side and I know that this body isn't going to last forever. And it doesn't matter whether you're 57 or 13 or 25. None of us know how long we're going to be here. So we're constantly, we constantly want to keep our eyes on the prize, um, suppressed so toward the mark of the higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus. That's what we want to do. Keep our eyes on the prize so that we can win the race because we could get stopped if, you, if you're running and you get stopped along the way, you know your goal is there, but all of a sudden you get so distracted with the temporary things, you could, might lose out and not win the race and not receive the prize. Um, Paul's use of earthly can be seen as reminding us that the first man was formed from the dust of the ground. And that's in Genesis chapter two, verse seven. And therefore corruptible. So this, yeah, yeah. That's why we have these pains. That's why coronavirus is taking a number, number of people out. It's, that's why we endure so many challenges. And uh, you look one day, you, you know, something, this is hurting. The next day, something else is, hurt, is hurting. It's just, it's life. It's like this, this body is corruptible. When believers rise again, we leave all that 
is earthly behind. Our bodies are renewed as a spiritual body fashioned by God permanent. We will be in a new eternal body. Our spirits will reside in a new eternal heavenly body fashioned by God. It'll be indestructible and celestial. Many will not experience death, but rather will be caught up and escape destruction of the body. And Paul says, although destroyed in the scripture, but and that might signify his own recognition that he might have had a violent death uh, of which he was unafraid because he made up his mind that a light, the light afflictions he would endure here on earth would be more than compensated for as a result of him achieving eternal life with Christ. In today's story, Heather is faith, faced with the unimaginable reality of a failing body. This experience only strengthens her faith in God and confidence in the afterlife. You see, God has already deposited his spirit in us and he wants his spirit to grow in us so that we can be prepared to be with him. And I think the worst thing is when the, the world, some won't, they don't want to see, some don't want to hear. Um, and that's the sad part. But we, we who know, you've been exposed to him. We know the Lord. We know that his spirit is in us, constantly speaking to us always reminding us that he will never leave us nor forsaken, forsake us. Knocking, he says, I stand at the door and knock. I want to come in. I want to sup with you. I want to take your burdens. You know, I, you know, I want to commune with you. And, and the sad part, and this is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, it says, the gospel is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. See, it's hidden. A lot of times, just like what happened to Heather, she found herself in a place that she was numb to what was going on. And then she turned her attention to the temporary, to the music. She turned her attention to away from the eternal to the temporary. And that took on a, it just completely grabbed it all. And we never want that to happen. But we know that it does happen, whether it's social media and other things, just completely taken over. And that we want to always be confident that we're going to be with the Lord and continue to grow in him. And that is my prayer for myself. That's my prayer for you, that we have this confidence that regardless of where we are, regardless of what happens to us, we're going to be with the Lord in the end. If our bodies fail us. If something happens in our, to our bodies, while it may be painful in the moment, while it may be uncomfortable in the moment, we cannot spend all of our time thinking about this body. There was a little section in our um, lesson that talks about heavenly bodies. And it says, today we spend so much time and money on our physical bodies while trying to ignore the fact that the aging process is an inevitable part of life. This is not to say that we shouldn't take care of our bodies by developing healthy eating habits and getting proper rest and exercise, but we must realize that the bodies we now possess are not going to function forever. Still Christians, we can rejoice that one day we will receive a heavenly body that is specifically designed for heaven. Our earthly bodies are contrasted with that which is spiritual, which can exist in the health, heavenly realm. There is a realm for physical, natural existence, and there is another for spiritual existence. Each realm has a distinct body fashioned for it, just like each season has its own clothing. So we as Christians know that we have a spiritual, there is a spiritual body awaiting us in heaven. 
And um, that's what we hope for. That's where our confidence lies. And I, we're, I'm just excited about it. And I'm just, I pray that God continues to develop, uh, his spirit continues to develop in me so that I don't want, I don't want to be here so much that I'm not looking towards that thing, that he, that perfect eternal body he has planned for me where I will be able to walk on the streets of paved in gold. There is a, 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 a song that says, oh, I want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on this. Uh, oh, on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Cares all past home at last ever to rejoice. See here we're constantly in this cycle where you know, sometimes we feel good, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we're encounter, we always, we talk about being, sometimes you're on the top of the mountain, then you're in the valley, then you're kind of, you're always either heading into a trial or you're in a trial or you've gotten through it. Like we're constantly, you know, we got a day by day, we're renewed through our relationship with the Lord. But when we are in our spiritual bodies, it will constantly be good. Like we won't have to worry about those valleys and those, those hills. We will be perfected, perfected in him. And I look forward to that time where I don't have to worry about the line. I don't have to worry about the storms. I don't have to worry about COVID, the diseases and those types of things. While I don't look forward to death, I look forward to being with the Lord because I know that he has planned something great for me. So that's how we remain hopeful in our bodies. Despite what we encounter day in, day out, we know that at the end of the race, there's this major prize. And, and that's the hope that Christians have. And that's the hope that we have to share. We cannot see it, but we have the faith to believe it. So you believe it despite what you're going through. You believe it despite what may be going on with your family, despite what's going on in this world. Have this confidence that you, we are going to be with the Lord. Those of us who remain in him, those of us who have faith in him and trust in him. Yes, he has a plan for us and his plan will not fail. We'll shed this temporary body and we'll take on our heavenly bodies. And we can share that with others. So don't close yourself off when you're feeling bad. Don't like go and become numb to the word, but let it feed you. Let the Lord feed you. Let him be the rock and the foundation that you stand on that when the day comes, whenever it comes, we'll be ready. We'll be ready and we'll always be confident. Uh, in the hope that we have in Christ. So I pray you have a great um, rest of the week. I am just thankful to God for this lesson. I am so thankful because I know it's an it's, uh, on-time word for us right now where we are. So please have a great rest of the week. Think on this thing. Go back and read 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Just read chapter 4 and chapter 5. And go back and read your lesson. Think about if you've uh, been in a place with Heather and don't let the world, being in the world, don't let that take over and be your only hope because that's gonna, that's temporary. So we bless God for this time in, in the word and we, we are just looking forward to seeing you on Sunday. And um, we, we just thank God for you and we pray you have a blessed week. God bless. <music>